Hey guys, how's it going? Preparing here. So I've been talking about Path of Exile. Uh, this is a pretty interesting game that uh, is going to come out soon, and it's a game that I really want to play. And uh, the reason I really haven't made many videos about the details of the game is because it's not anywhere near the size of, um, you know, what Diablo is, what uh, World of Warcraft is. So when I make a video explaining some parts of specifics of the game, you, I feel like a lot of you guys would just have no no idea what I'm talking about. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to introduce you guys to the fundamentals of the game and some of you that are just starting the game will probably get a great amount of insight and if you don't know anything about the game uh, maybe it will give you a better idea. Now this game is a lot like Diablo 2 and it has a lot of uh, very new features that really enhance um, the gameplay. Um, in my opinion, it's really the next stage in conceptual design in uh, action RPGs and uh, I've been really excited to play this game. Now, the leveling system works just like uh, Diablo 2. Uh, you, you can go from 1, you can go to 100. Um, there's many different leagues. Uh, leagues are like kind of like ladders and uh, there's the hardcore, there's the softcore. If you die in hardcore, your character gets moved to softcore. There's a lot of temporary race leagues where they have events and you try to out-level uh, other people under certain rules, under certain time restrictions. And you can win certain prizes, certain uniques, spe certain special items. So that's kind of the overview of the uh, leveling system. There is PvP. PvP is kind of elementary. There's a lot of kinds of PvP that might come out in the future, but a lot of this stuff is still in the works. So I'm not really going to go over that, but that's generally uh, the kind of stuff that you do in the game. You can do the leveling, do the PvP, you can get items and, you know, all the good stuff that pretty much existed in Diablo 2, uh, in my opinion, to a little bit greater extent than Diablo 2. Now when it comes to the character design, uh, I'll try to keep it brief, but it is extremely complicated, uh, as you will soon see, and, um, you know, try not to miss any of it. So we'll start here. Right now I'm playing a shadow, but we'll get into why um, class anything makes any kind of difference. So in this game, there's three primary stats. There's obviously a lot of stats like plus life, life regen per minute, which you can see on items, some interesting stats, increased elemental damage with weapons. You know, it's a very long list, but primarily there's three. These are the basic character stats. So you have intelligence, which gives you mana, which allows you to cast stuff. Everything is mana based, just like it was in Diablo 2. And every 5 intelligence gives you 1% energy shield. Now, energy shield would normally be some white line near my health pool here. And the energy shield is kind of like a buffer. So if you would take damage, it would first go off of your energy shield, unless it's chaos damage, which is the special circumstance. But if it was not chaos damage, it would be reduced from your energy shield if you had some before going off of your life. You can replenish your life through potions, like the ones I have here. You can replenish your mana through potions, and there's other clever kind of potions that have added effects outside of mana or life regeneration. But you cannot use a potion that has anything to do with energy shield. You get your energy shield back if you do not take damage over a certain amount of time, and that base amount of time is 6 seconds, and you can reduce that through certain means. So if you get hit, your energy shield goes down to zero, you take some life damage, you're at half-life, no energy shield, you don't get hit for six seconds, your energy will start to climb back up and you can use a life to get back. Uh, sorry, you can use a life potion to get your life back. Mana regenerates constantly as a natural regeneration effect, but life does not. You have to get certain um, certain things to regenerate your life. So that's that's kind of the, the, mana th the mana thing. And how do you get more life? You can get it through strength or you can get it through other uh, means as well. Uh, you can see two strength gives you one life and five strength gives you 1% melee damage. The melee physical damage is an additive bonus, so plus 1% is really never going to give you 1% extra damage. That's why it's really not that powerful. Then we have the a dexterity stat. One dexterity gives two accuracy. Accuracy is kind of like attack rating is in Diablo 2. It's your ability to uh, hit the target when you attack it. And five dex is your 1% evasion. And evasion is a defensive stat that allows you to dodge attacks based on the accuracy of the attacker. So the accuracy and evasion kind of counterbalance each other. And you can see here in my defensive tab, um, there's some additional explanations. So there's armor, and you get armor just by having armor on items. And what armor does, it reduces the flat amount of physical damage that you take but it does so relative to the damage taken. So if you take a really big hit, armor will do almost nothing. 
but if you take a really small hit relative to your armor, you'll absorb almost all of it through your armor. So armor is very good for absorbing small hits, but very poor for absorbing big hits. Evasion, like I said, is the chance to dodge the attack. Even the monsters have a certain uh, accuracy rating, and if their accuracy rating um, fails to roll against your evasion, you evade the attack and then take no damage. And uh, there's the resistances as well. Resistances are just like they are in Diablo 2. It's the uh, additive sum, caps at 75, and is reduced by each leading difficulty. There's four difficulties in the game right now, but there soon will be three when they uh, add the third act, which should be in the coming weeks. And uh, block is kind of interesting. Block is a lot like Diablo 2 was in Classic. It's a very strict value that's not modified by a stat, but you can modify it through passes. So you can get a block with a shield, or if you're using two weapons, you'll get natural block because you're dual wielding. It's kind of like a parry attack. And if you're using certain two-handers like staves or staffs, or however you want to call it, uh, they have natural block built in as well, which you can then multiply uh, through talents as well. And um, blocking is kind of just like neglecting the attack, but you can be stunned. So that's the next thing. So your block and stun recovery increased. What does that mean? Um, when you deal a certain amount of damage past a, a certain threshold, if you do very little, nobody will get stunned. But if you do enough damage to a target, that target will get stunned, and they'll be unable to move or cast or do anything during that small interval of time. And being stunned is a real problem if you're the player getting stunned when surrounded by a bunch of mobs. You won't have control of your character, and you will die. So because of that, um, it's very important to not take too much damage, to not get yourself in too bad a position. And on the flip side, it's very good to do a lot of damage repeatedly to mobs so they cannot attack you back. Why is this important? Well, when it comes to blocking, if you would block an attack, you would, you would then be stunned for the duration of the block. And um, you know, that can have a, a significant uh, factor in, uh, in your player. So if, if you, even though you may have really, really high block, you may just be stunned in place and not be able to do very much. So that's about it. You got the defensive stuff, you got armor, uh, mitigate physical attacks, you got resist and mitigate magical attacks, you got evasion uh, to avoid melee and ranged projectile attacks. Uh, generally armor is a lot more effective, but evasion does have its role because uh, evasion rolls off of the crit separately on the hit, so it has some kind of stacking multiplier, really good in PvP, kind of lackluster in PvE, and um, then you have the energy shield, the life, and the mana. So pretty basic stuff. Now. When it comes to choosing a character, like I said, I made a shadow. So what did I make a shadow? What does a shadow have that other people don't? Right now we're looking at the skill tree. This is the skill tree that all the classes share, and this has about 1,400 skills. This is the passive skill tree. Every single ability on here is a passive ability. And your class essentially determines where you start in this kind of galaxy of skills. So if you're a shadow, which I am, I'm over here. This is shadow. Shadows are int and dexterity based classes so I'm, I'm in here i have int over there dexterity over there this is the witch class the witch class is the int based class this is the ranger this is the dex based class that's why the shadow is placed in between the two and essentially you can look at it this way there's the witch which is the int class the marauder which is the strength class the ranger which is the dexterity class and then the hybrids so you have the duelist starting down here, which is a dexterity strength hybrid. You have the shadow, which is a dexterity int hybrid. And you have the templar, which is an intellect strength hybrid. And <clears throat> at the beginning, when you start off, when you make your character, uh, this matters a lot. But as you progress through the skill tree, as you get really high level, it does not matter very much. Uh, certain builds that I have developed for my own characters at high level, um, you know, if, if I wanted to Let's say I made a build that was ideal for a Templar. If I wanted to play a Witch, you know, it would be like two or three skills off. If I wanted to play a Shadow, it'd be maybe like four or five skills off in certain cases. So the class may not actually matter at high level. So there is um, some leniency if you like certain others. Now when it comes to the skills, you can just see some examples here. Increase spell damage, increase spell damage, cast speed, cast speed. And you have some bigger ones, which are like intellect and crit chance. So these are like bigger. The size of the thing pretty much determines uh, how important they are. There's a lot of uh, maximum life passives, and there's a lot of interesting ones. So you can see these, a few more big ones, and you have the really big ones. So look at this really big one here. Eldritch Battery converts all energy shield into mana. 
And that's probably why I don't have an energy shield. See, energy shield zero. And I don't know if you've uh, seen the gear or seen how the game works, but uh, I do have some energy shield, and that's the reason why it doesn't show up, because it's converted into my mana. So I can have a lot more mana, cast a lot more spells, have a lot more regeneration. So that's the idea there. Um, I've spent countless hours just mess around with the skill tree and I love it. It's really fun. For a person like me, um, this is very, very interesting and it's really, it's really, uh, it's really something I enjoy to do. I mean, I, I can't, I can't really describe it any better than that. Alright, so on to the items here. So the items that I use, they have sockets. Yeah, but I also have skills. So wh where do the skills come in? How do I get my skills? Is it like guild doors? If I have like a, a wand, do I have a wand tax? No, not exactly. Uh, the skills are actually these gems that are socketed in the items. And items can spawn with sockets, but you can also modify the number of sockets by using certain items on the existing items. And for instance, this is a skill called Frostbite. So Frostbite is a curse, and it curses the target, and they take extra cold damage because it lowers their cold resistance. So this ability is level 7. So how does it get to level 7? Well, when you kill stuff, you get experience for your character. You also get experience on all the gems you have equipped on your character, on your gear. So the gems are the skills, and they level up as you level up. Additionally, there's these kind of linked lines between the sockets. And when you have the, these things, you pretty much modify certain abilities with support gems. So you can see this gem is a faster projectiles gem. It's not an actual skill. This is not like a fireball. You know, faster projectiles is, you know, a modifier. So what does it modify? It modifies Freezing Pulse. Freezing Pulse is a spell. It's level 10 and it does, um, you know, cold damage and stuff. And I can show you guys here. Let's just uh, get rid of Frostbite, put in Freezing Pulse. So this is Freezing Pulse. It is a pulse and it's cold damage and it freezes. Now if I take the Freezing Pulse and modify it with the linked uh, gems in my armor with faster projectiles, so the projectiles move faster, and in this game, um, the duration of the cast is set. The speed will then make it go further. So faster projectiles on a projectile attack will make the projectile go further, which is important for Freezing Pulse because it does higher damage at close range as opposed to the far away. So the close range bracket is actually higher because of the speed of the projectile, in my case. Cold penetration, so it gets through some of the cold resistance, and lesser multiple projectiles, so it adds two extra projectiles, but it lowers the damage of the projectiles. But in the case of Freezing Pulse, because it does slight AoE damage, you can then stack the three projectiles. So let me show you here. If I cast near me, it does three projectiles spread out, but if I cast far away, I can hit one target with all three projectiles. I'm going to cast Phase Run to run a little bit faster, and I'm going to find some mobs here to kill. Yeah, they just died. Fun stuff. I'm just going to pick up this piece of gear, show you guys how gear works here shortly. So there's a lot of different stats on gear that I can't really describe at this time because it's going to take a countless amount of hours, but um, generally the system is very similar to that of Diablo 2. But some very new stuff that does exist in this game is the ability to modify items. So as you can see here, I have a simple robe. So I've demonstrated this in the past in other YouTube videos, but I'll just have a quick demonstration here again. So a simple robe. Let's say this was a really good item. So you can take an item and you can go to chat and you can type slash item level. You can see it's item level 4. Let's pretend item level 4 was a really amazing thing, which in some cases it is. You find an item that's like level 70, it's like wow, it can roll some really good stats. Level 4, not so amazing. But let's say it was. Let's just pretend that it was. I'd be, oh damn, that's an amazing item. So what I can do is I can upgrade it from a normal item to a magical item. Now when doing this, it won't actually change the sockets or the links in any way. See, so now it has a prefix and a suffix and is a blue item. Now let's just pretend this is a really shitty blue item. I'm like, oh damn, I didn't really want that. I can take an orb, orb, orb alteration to change it into a new blue item. And then, oh man, mana, I love mana. I just wanted more mana, so that's great. But it only has one affix, see, barrel simple rope. It doesn't have a suffix. So I can add an additional property to a magical item with that item, get some lightning resistance. Pretty cool stuff. Now let's just say the sockets were not good. You could modify the number of sockets, you can modify the links between them, but it's all random, so it's going to take a lot of currencies. You can take, for instance, a chromatic warp to change the color if you wanted. See, so now I have a green-red linked socket as opposed to a blue-blue linked socket. The colors change, but the links did not and the item did not. So it's all on separate levels, and that's what makes it really cool. 
Now, as you probably noticed, all these like interesting items that I'm using on this particular item, that's all I really have in my inventory. I don't have any gold or anything. This game, there's no auction house, there's no currency, except for these items. Items that modify items, it's kind of like crafting. This is the currency. This is what you use to trade for stuff. This is what you use to uh, you know, uh, get items from vendors. And this is what most players are after. Not essentially these, but there are a lot of other um, more unique and more interesting items along with these. So if I go to a vendor here, I can go and purchase this shield, for instance, for an orb of transmutation, which I have 12 of. And I get the orb of transmutations for selling uh, unidentified blue items or finding them in the game. Certain items sell for um, you know, other, other different currencies. Um, usually items that have stats on them will sell for uh, orbs of alterations. Uh, in my experience, that has been the case. And orb of alterations you get through selling and getting shards from blue items. So this is a blue item, it has some affixes. If they're valuable affixes, it will give me some alteration shards. If not, it will give me nothing. Let's see what it does. It gives me one alteration shard. So I can get these alteration shards, I can get 20 of them, I can get one orb of alteration, and then I can modify blue items with these. So that's kind of the idea of gathering currencies and using them uh, when you want, either to modify your items or to trade through other players for items they may have found that are better for your character as opposed to theirs. So in a nutshell, that's kind of uh, the base of the game. Uh, all the very raw mechanics and hopefully you learned a few things about the game and maybe it interests you. Right now the game is in open beta, uh, sorry, the game is in a closed beta, but you can, um, you can buy in for a CD key if you give them a $10 donation with a $10. It's the, um, it's like the, uh, the fluffy stuff. So you can get fluffy stuff with, uh, with the money that you, uh, give them. You get like points and in my case I bought a shitload of stash tabs. I think you start with four and I have like 14 and yeah, I give them like 50 bucks. So, I thought it'd be cool. That's all they really have. The game, when it hits open beta, which is probably going to be in about a month, it's going to be completely free, and uh, it's free to play absolutely everything. So, check it out. Hopefully, you guys enjoy it as much as I have, because it's definitely um, appealing to the players who enjoy games like Diablo, Diablo 2, and uh, maybe not so much Diablo 3. So, that's about it. Hope you guys enjoy it, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.